welcome back everybody. Hope everybody's keeping well, keeping safe. Um, as you can see, today's pattern um, that we're going to be tying is the park shrimp. Um, and it's really is a super pattern. It's a fly that um, Alejandro from Spain has asked me to tie up. Uh, he lives over here in Northern Ireland and uh, he fishes a lot of our rivers. And uh, this is a firm favorite with him. So he'd asked me to, uh, to tie it up. Um, so happy to do so. Um, and as you can see here, there's a couple of my own fly box. Um, I always have a great, great pattern and something I always keep uh, in my fly box different sizes. You can see a, a little double here that was actually a size 15 and then a tube version. So uh, super, super flies. Um, and yeah, just in terms of the tie-in, you can see there it's got an oval tinsel uh, tag. And the tail, I suppose the tail is the key thing uh, I think about all these types of flies. Uh, so the Ross McDonald fly and, and Ross has come up with quite a number of different um, uh, patterns of this style of tying. So you always look at the park shrimp which was really sort of the first, then you have the Calvin shrimp and Heather shrimp. And as I say, the key thing, uh, certainly for me and from, from speaking to Ross, is the teal. Um, and it uses Arctic runner. A lot of people, I suppose there's debate people, some people would use uh, Arctic fox. Um, but I think runner just gives it that, that edge. Um, there's a translucence that you don't get with uh, with fox, um, and for me really is the teal that, that makes a big, big difference. Um, the body is a mixture of light bright and black seal spur. And again, Ross is very, uh, I suppose, taking influence from the Irish, uh, sort of shrimp flies um, with the seal spur body. Um, and you, you maybe saw with the uh, the Mary shrimp, uh, when I was chatting to Ross, um, he was a big sort of uh, fan of, of uh, not only seal spur, but also light bright. So, uh, the park shrimp incorporates both of those. Um, the wing is arctic fox um, and uh, and then the front hackle is a yellow cock hackle with a dyed badger uh, and again the badger, that's sort of dyed badger, I think it gives it sort of a a willy gun type um, effect or appearance. Um, so that's really the fly. Um, and as I say it is, I certainly think the teal is a, a thing that it really um, is the key sort of um, uh, factor in success of the fly. Um, and I'm just going to show you a little video here. It's uh, there's a full version you may have seen on my YouTube channel, um, but it's uh, it was from last year. I'll just show you that now. Let's say that was just a very small um, clip, um, but what the I suppose the key thing about that was, um, uh, yeah, it was actually this little. I showed you briefly earlier. Uh, it was actually this little fly here. Um, it was a size, um, I think it's a size 15. So corn row. That was fishing at corn row on the ban. Uh, lots of fresh fish, stuff of fresh fish, um, but the water was low and, and sort of uh, fairly warm. And they weren't looking at anything and uh, jumping all over the place here was uh, if you fished at Conroe you'll, <laughs> you'll know it's absolutely stuffed with fish at, at uh, particular times of the year uh, but they weren't looking at anything so I decided to put on this um, very small say size 15 um, and I had uh, I got a nice fish and lost a couple um, but I think yeah definitely uh, it's the teal that really for me uh, is the big thing that really is a sort of fish attractor as such and you can see a nice wee bit of uh, light bright or not light bright angel hair in the uh, in the tail of that one um and as i say that's another one there that's a a, a tube version um and people were asking me yeah, about the tube version when we tied the uh, the fallen shrimp so um, i'm going to tie another uh, a park shrimp on a tube today and we'll see how we go um so yeah what I'm going to do is uh, similar to, uh, as I say, the Fawn shrimps. We're going to tie on some of this humor uh, size uh, small tubing directly onto it. And as I say, uh, as long as you don't put too heavy a cone or a very big fly, uh, this is certainly rigid enough and uh, strong enough that you can tie straight onto that tubing. Um, and I suppose it has the advantages that we're tying in the one length. Uh, a lot of other sort of tube, um, when you're tying in with plastics, it's, it's different diameters of, of tubing. Um, and yeah, whilst you can join those in a nice, fairly secure um, join, I still just prefer the integrity of having one piece of, uh, of tubing. Um, 
but uh, yeah so like we did with the um, the fawn one the fawn uh, shrimp we're just going to bare the edge of that a little bit uh, and essentially all we're doing there is just creating a, a ridge um, for the junction tubing to uh, uh, junction tubing to sit on to. So once we've got that, hopefully you can you can see that. So it's just a little ridge, um, and then just when we got the junction tubing on there, uh, that will just fit on there, and it just means that's not going to go anywhere. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll just cut a length of that, and again you use a scalpel or something, uh, a pair of scissors. Uh, just cut that to, to your length and then put that onto your to your needle. And as I say, these needles are sharp, so always just be careful when you're uh, health and safety when you're tying those on. Um, the thread we'll be using today is uh, a UTC, just a UTC 70. Um, so just start that as normal. And we want to have a bit of a base of a, a thread onto the Onto this tube, and then um, again, as I've mentioned before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a a tag um, or under the junction tubing. Uh, I'm going to tie in some. This is pearl, um, UTC pearl, uh, mylar tensile, flat tensile. So I'm just going to tie a, a little bit of that in. And because the the the, uh, the junction tube I'm going to be using is clear, um, you will actually see that through it. So it's really just it's creating an extra trigger point for the fly. And so that's just a wee bit of varnish, and then we're just going to work our way down. You can see just against the black, um, black tubing. Uh, it gives a really nice effect. Uh, just, just create a nice bed of a uh, nice bed of thread. And I'll try not to what I did last time and uh, have the, the, uh, the tube spin. So that's that's the body done now. Or that sort of tag. And then just get your little piece of junction tubing and just slide that over. So that's basically our the rear of the fly complete joined up, um, and then again as with the um, with the fawn uh, shrimp, our shrimp, I'm just going to use a, a tag. Again, if you didn't have um, if you tied the tail straight up on that, there's a wee bit of a bump there, and that would just sort of cause the the tail to flare up a wee bit. So if you just put a tag, it just creates a uh, better uh, profile for the tail. So we'll just cut a, a length of this off. And as I say, that's just UTC, or not UTC, uh, Uni, again, uh, small oval tinsel. Just catch it in. And then probably around about Three turns is fine. That's all you'll need. And you can just use your thumb just to make sure that's nice and neat. Um, 
Another wee trick when you are tying tubes, sometimes just in case that there was a bit of a, uh, if the tubes spun on that needle, uh, they don't generally, um, but you can always do a half hitch and that just secures that in. Right, so we're ready basically now for our tail. And as I say, the tail in this fly is Arctic Runner. Um, An Arctic Runner, I don't know if you can see there, uh, you maybe can, but there's a translucence um, that you don't get. Uh, you can sort of see it's, it's it's sort of similar to polar bear. Um, you just don't get that with uh, Arctic Fox. And I think that's part of the secret of, of uh, why the runner has um, a wee bit of an edge. Um, but the other thing, I suppose the downside of runner is that it's a very soft material. So um, you need to be careful that uh, it doesn't wrap. So whenever Ross was developing the tail, it's actually a layer tail, so it's three layers. So the first layer is a sort of short and quite a dense uh, uh, layer. So what we'll do is we'll just cut a little patch of our of our runner. Um, and for this, I would take out a lot of the uh, the guard here. So it's just. You want a short, a short bunch. Um, and as I say, the key thing this will be doing is just to support that, that lower or the upper, upper layers. So just tie it in, fairly short, pension loop. And then just with our scissors, again you can taper that, just with that cut, hopefully you can see that. So I'm cutting that at an angle, which just helps to, uh, to taper that a wee bit nicer. So that's basically our orange. Uh, and then the middle layer, again is runner. Uh, in this case it is going to be yellow. Uh, and this is the long, or this is the section of the tail that you want nice and long. I don't know if you can actually see there, but there is like a, a translucence in that. I don't know if the lights are good enough to pick that up. Um, but there's like a sort of a, a translucence that you don't get, as I say, uh, with Arctic Fox. Um, so with this, you want this layer here. This is. Um, a nice long, uh, long layer. This is really what gives you a lot of the mobility of the tail. Um, so this, you do want those longer guard hairs. Um, so we take out a lot of that, the softer under fur. And I would spend quite a bit of time just making sure that I'd get to the stage where I was happy with the uh, with the tail. So you can see that there layer sits on top of the other one uh, of that base layer, and this is a much finer uh, finer layer. see that's nicely starting to taper and then the next thing you want to be tying in is some uh, flash but again this fly and particularly the tail it's all about mobility 
So uh, rather than having something like a, a crystal flash or something like that, um, Ross again uh, chose to use Angel hair, and it's a very uh, again a very mobile uh, mobile material. Um, this is a nice gold. Uh, again, that's you can get gold. Look, you can get gold, which is a very nice. Uh, a nice colour for any of these types of patterns um, and you don't want too much so again I would just take out until I was happy with the, the amount of that and then lift and lock so take the shorter end here bring that down a little bit to about there just bring that back on itself and then trim it to the tail, length of the tail and then I, once I do that then I would always taper it uh, so they're not always the same same length That's basically so that's bas yeah one two uh, two layers of, of uh, uh, runner and then a flash and then the very final sort of the last part of the sandwich so to speak is the uh, is some more orange runner um, and with this one here you want a sort of a medium medium length so you start with short then you have the very long middle layer and then this top layer is a sort of a medium uh, and with this one you want a mix of the under uh, under fur and the guard um, That's essentially the uh, the tail done. As I say, there is quite a bit of work to get that right, uh, but when you see it in the water, uh, the movement it really almost does come alive, and well worth spending the time to uh, to get that right. Um, and as I say, hopefully you can see that. But three quite distinct layers. Um, and yeah, it really is just becomes alive in the water. Um, so that's essentially uh, the tail done. The body of the fly is a say it's a mixture of dubbing. So the rear part of it is a, a gold. It's sort of uh, two thirds, one third. So the, the rear third is uh, light bright. Um, and this is the gold uh, light bright that Ross would use, so you can sort of see it's a, uh, it's a sort of a duller type gold, it's not a very very bright gold, um, but uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a, just a wee bit more subtle, so I suppose the whole fly is actually a bit more subtle than, than say a cascade. Um, so I've managed to get some decent, uh, find some decent wax, thank you Pete. Pete actually made this up specially, so uh, much appreciated, Pete. Um, so we're just going to dub this on. And at least Sean McGarry uh, had been asking <laughs> about um, should this not be ribbed? And uh, Ross actually said what he does is he puts a bit of uh, varnish uh, onto the thread. So I'm just going to do that. Um, and then he puts on the the light bright. So just get some of that. Okay, a nice dubbing loop. Okay. 
that's probably much enough. Okay, so that's the rear um, of the of the fly. And just depends again personal preference how straggly you want that tail to be. Um, but the front is going to be black seal spur. But before we do that, we're going to put on uh, a fine uh, pearl rib. And this is a size uh, 16, so it's a fairly fine one. But again, it just depends on the size of the fly that you uh, you want to tie. Uh, this is a fairly small uh, tube, so I don't want it to be too thick. Um, so just tie that in at the side. As I say, we've got seals fur. Pete, I have to say this wax is a million times better than the, the stuff I did have. Thank you again. Um, and then the body is uh, black seals fur. What I'm actually doing as well, I'm not using too much um, as I get near to where I tie the wing in, I might actually start to taper that down a little bit because I just don't want it um, to be too much of a big bump. Um, that looks about right. So then just take our pearl rib and you can see there hopefully it just gives a really nice nice effect just that a little bit of extra added uh, attraction and if you do have any rogue hairs you can just I say I just always like to do that it's just where the wing will sit um, that's now our body starting to uh, start to take shape, um, and then the the wing of this uh, is uh, Arctic Fox, um, and with that is yet yeah, you do like to this is a nice silver Arctic uh, um, Fox, um, and Ross I think it's called uh, he <laughs> coined the term uh, chic uh, shabby chic. Um, so you do want to have some of these longer guard hairs uh, just to mingle in with the uh, with the, the wing. So I've um, got one here that I've prepared earlier just to help to speed things up a little bit. Um, but yeah, you want to sort of that straggly uh, look. And just sort of coming into the uh, into the, the tail. Order. 
Right. And then just get a nice sharp pair of scissors and cut that. Yep, um, it has jungle cock um, tied in. Some people do tie them in as sort of eyes, or again, I prefer them sort of rift. Um, so I normally would tie them in at this stage. sitting quite as I would like it so I'll just never be afraid just to some's not just sitting right don't be afraid to uh, to adjust it now once you've tied that in bring those hock, uh, hackle stocks back and just secure them in Yes, the final couple of things now are the hackles. Um, and the first hackle is a yellow. Um, and again, I've just prepared that uh, as I normally do, so strip off the waist. And then at the top, I've just cut some of the fibers. Um, so just tie that in at the side. Use the back of the scissors just to stroke those fibers back. And the park shrimp was obviously named after the the famous beat on the on the River Dee. Uh, great, great beat. Um, I fished it a few times, um, and. Uh, yeah, it was actually Kenny Reed, who used to be uh, one of the gillies there. Uh, he was he wasn't still is very friendly with Ross, and he'd asked Ross to uh, come up with a new pattern for him. So uh, a sort of cascade type style, but with Willie gun colours. So uh, Ross Julie uh, came up with uh, the fly. Uh, there was actually early prototypes that he tested out in Ireland over here. So again, uh, if you listen to the Mary shrimp um, tang, you can s you can hear a wee bit more about that from Ross himself. Uh, but I think the first time Kenny tried them on the Dura stream in uh, a park, I think he had about was it five or six fish. It's like a twenty pounder, an eighteen pounder, a twenty four pounder, and uh, uh, so it was well and truly uh, christened, as they say. Um, and it's going on to catch fish all around the world, so uh, it really is a, a cracking pattern. So that's our yellow hackle in. Um, and the final one is the uh, is a dyed orange, but what I say I quite like to do is just, just try the cone for size to see how much room you've got to play with. So we've got a wee red cone there, which I'm going to going to use and as I say um, one of the key things is using these uh, dyed orange badger uh, feathers and uh, this is a whiting one which was sort of the original ones that um, that Ross used uh, I was actually over from the same batch that Ross actually the very first ones that Ross uh, came up with so just get her one track I'll tie that in just as usual This wax is definitely uh, a million times better than uh, the previous stuff. <laughs> Pete, it is well worth all that effort that you went to to, uh, to get the right stuff. Just stroke those back. 
Um, and as I said before, when you're tying in with cones, I would normally do a few more uh, turns than I would normally do. Um, because the cone will uh, force a lot of, some of the hack up back. Um, but just as before, every time you do a turn, just stroke those back. If you do want a sort of a, a darker fly, you can also uh, use a dyed uh, yellow badger rather than sort of the um, the yellow and as I say that gives a, a darker fly even again that will probably do us I wonder if that will actually do us there yep that will probably actually do us I don't want to tie too many wraps um, That's nearly our fly completed. see how that fits for size um, that's pretty good so just do a couple of uh, let's do one half hitch and then the final thing left to do is just to tie in the or secure in the little cone. So I'll say that'll just slip over there. But what we normally do is put a little bit of super glue just to secure that in. the end of the uh, end of the tubing so this is really uh, it's good to put it in but it, it's the plastic burring at the end which is actually going to hold us uh, in so it's, I suppose it's a combination built and braces as they say um, but that's essentially our fly and Give that a few seconds just to uh, just to uh, set, and then I'm just going to basically cut uh, about a couple of mil. and that will be our fly uh, completed and so I always like just to in the reverse and just get a good push just to make sure that that has um it hasn't got stuck or anything but uh yes that's our 
our finished pork shrimp and uh, this one was we'll go into my uh, into my fly box uh, you can see there's a nice uh, bit of angel hair in the tail and also hopefully you can see that little trigger point where I've tied in the uh, the pearl um, but a really really good pattern um, a pattern that's definitely uh, well worth uh, having in your own fly box um, as I say uh, just that tail you can see the, the mobility in the tail there uh, it really just does give it give it an edge uh, I think um, and well worth having some of these in your in your fly box um, so hopefully you have enjoyed that uh, as I say uh, probably what I'll tie up next is some dolichin flies a couple of dolichin flies that I would use uh, dolichin or loch nay big loch nay brown trout uh, that run the feeder rivers to spawn um, and we fish them very like sea trout but uh, they get to quite a big size um, and there's I suppose a range of, of flies that you can use to uh, to uh, fish for those so we'll probably tie up a few of those uh, next uh, if anybody else has any other ideas or um, things that like to be tied up uh, let me know and as I say Alejandro hopefully you keep them well and hopefully we'll see each other on the fin or the moon some point uh, this year and uh, yeah everybody keep safe if you enjoyed this uh, subscribe to see some more and uh, look forward to seeing you all again